that way. Okay, let's run with Call the next Wednesday, April 26, 2023, to order. If you would rise and join us in the invocation and pledge, please. Father God, we come to you today praising your name, asking for blessings upon this meeting, Father, that the will can be done of the people. May you give mercy, grace, and peace to the leadership here today that the cup runneth over and pours down upon the great people of Harrison County. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Commissioner Trecost, are you on Zoom? Yes, ma'am. Okay, public comment. Is there anyone here that wishes to speak publicly? Nobody signed up. Yeah, one signed up, actually. Is there anyone on Zoom that wishes to speak publicly? Anyone on Zoom wish to speak publicly? Okay, hearing none, we will go to the consent agenda. What's the play? Motion to approve consent agenda. Motion to approve consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. Number three, aye. payroll change notices. It appears we just have one under A. Move to approve payroll change item A. Motion to approve number or payroll change notice item A. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. Number four, requisitions, purchase orders, invoices, as shown on A, vendor list of payments. I had some questions. Move to approve vendor list payments. Motion to approve vendor list of payments and four. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. Number five is an emergency item for consideration of approval of a fourth amendment to forbearance agreement for the forbearance and deferment of the payment of CED assessments for the Charles Point project and approval for the president of the commission to execute and deliver same. The nature of the emergency is, is the scheduled sale of the property subject to the proposed forbearance by the state auditor on April 27th, 2023. Madam Chairman, I don't believe this meets the West Virginia Code for an emergency meeting as stated in the code. And I request that it be withdrawn from the agenda. Tommy, would you like to speak or Trey or somebody else? Uh, Mr. Amon does not represent the commission. I, don't, I guess I don't represent the commission. That is up to either. Uh, our legal representative, which I don't see in here, or he's on, uh, he's on Zoom. Trey, Madam President, yes. Trey, would you please give us an opinion, Madam uh, President? Yes. Before we have uh, Trey's opinion, uh, I'll make the motion that we do move forward and approve and fix the signature of the commission president. Thank you. Okay, the motion has been made to approve number five with the president's signature and to deliver. Okay, now I'll open it to discussion. Trey, would you like to speak to this? The voice changed. You <laughs> sound like on the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Not not working. Um, I, have a, I have a point of objection that I made a motion for this to be removed and it has not been. I didn't recall a motion being made. 
Yes, ma'am. Okay. I mean, I. I asked for it to be removed from the the agenda because it did not meet the requirements. Well, that's okay. We can vote on that motion. Even though I apparently don't represent the commission, just as somewhat, yeah. Get him on the phone. Sorry about that. <laughs> you have days like that. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. It's an echo, but that's okay. Can you be muted? Maybe on the Stress out every technology can handle. So I looked at the definition of emergency. Yeah, turn his volume down. Under the West Virginia code, and let me just read it to you all briefly, and we'll go through it. So emergency meeting. Uh, means any meeting called by a governing body for the purpose of addressing an unexpected event, which requires immediate attention because it poses a an imminent threat to public health or safety, b an imminent threat of damage to public or private property, or c an imminent material financial loss or other imminent substantial harm to a public agency, its employees or members of the public which it serves. So the issue I had with this item is that it's not an unexpected event, so it technically doesn't fall within the definition of an emergency. It's something the county has known about for a long time, but before we even get down below, we have to have an unexpected event, and I don't believe it meets that definition. Uh, the emergency meeting trigger is also to be used as a called a last course of action. It's not something which is favored. So I told you over yesterday, I thought we ought to reconvene a special meeting if appropriate or if possible. If it's not going to work, it's not going to work. Is that all you have, Trey? That's all I have. Yes. So I don't know. I'm fine with listening to you, Tom. Okay. And you represent us. I, I, I certainly respect that position. Um, yeah, I think we're certainly in a gray area. I don't think it's clear one way or the other whether this falls within the exception. Um, I mean, I I think. There's a good faith argument to be made that there is an imminent threat to uh, damage to private property due to the fact that there would be um, a foreclosure, a tax sale foreclosure, and then that in all likelihood has an adverse impact on the value of that property. Um, so I think we we certainly have a, a good argument to be made with respect to that item, um, as to whether you know the unexpected event. You know, part of the issue here has been there uh, were a whole new set of laws passed last year uh, with respect to property tax foreclosure uh, and how that works and moving that process from the sheriff to primarily to the auditor and switching around how all that works and timing and who's responsible for what. And I think the auditor's office has been trying to sort through exactly on their end, the mechanics of how all this would work. And Genesis has said that, you know, they have never received a notice from uh, the auditor's office of the upcoming sale, and they discovered it by looking at the website. And so there's just a lot of protocols with respect to this because it's a new process that are in flux. And it seems to me that created enough uncertainty as to when this tax sale would actually occur. And therefore, 
the timing of the need for the forbearance to avoid the sale does create an unexpected event. Mr. Amon, it was advertised on June 7th, October 4th, October 11th, October 18th, and November 29th, 2022, and April 5th, 2023. So for us to sit here and say that they didn't know that their CED and their delinquent taxes weren't coming up before today is a little hard to believe. And why are we not doing this for all of Harrison County taxpayers who didn't receive a notice or didn't bother to read the paper or didn't want to pay their taxes? Certainly a fair certainly a fair argument uh, and they also have that it's out that the harrison county tax increment revenue and refunding bonds for the series e since we can get a report on as of april 18 2023 and the special excise tax district the uh, series 2019 which is sales tax and the 2019 b bonds these are all in default and that's public knowledge. But here we sit today as it's a last minute, like, oops, we didn't know about it. And I don't see how if it's been advertised, we can call it an emergency meeting. When everybody in Harrison County that reads the newspaper knows that those have been up for sale by the auditor's office. And if we want to, Susan, do this properly and bring in the bondholders, the CED board president, representatives of Charles Point, and sit down. And as far as I'm concerned, with the state office and discuss whether or not we're going to do this for the fourth time. In the previous times, they've said that we would never see the fourth time. And here we are seeing the fourth time. We can claim COVID, we can claim everything else, but I don't know what that's got to do with the first one, the second one, the third one. And now we're here for a point. And here's you saying that we'd never see it again. You came before this commission. That's a that's a good point. It, it is. And you said that we would never see it again. Oh, come on. I'm not sure about that. You have you probably have to quote my what's my verbiage on that. Thing to have a coffee. See, is there a quote in there? Right. What's that? I think, it's just to, again? I think it's close to it, Tom. The assessments will go to future years if the payment modification is not put in place. So we'll even go up more. So you were saying then that we were going to have this problem. Yeah. I mean, I don't think. Believe in the CED assessment that is due this year was increased by 1.8 million. I don't know that that happened. What was that? It would decrease by 1.8 million. Yeah. This would allow Jonas Partners to pay its property taxes on time. That's not happened. Yeah, they did pay their property taxes. One time? Only one time. Well, so the, the property taxes that were the subject of that forbearance, they would have had to have paid. And so The, I think the assessments, the, the problem is that the assess, the assessment can't be paid without also paying the property taxes at the same time. So if there were a year in which, for the years in which there was a forbearance with the assessment being lifted, then the property taxes were paid for those years. That's just the years going forward from that where there's no forbearance and hence the assessments one can't pay, be paid without the other. And so the taxes have not been paid for those years. And one of the agreements was that Genesis Partners was to put 80% of the excise tax increment revenues in the investor account to pay CD assessments and replenish the reserve fund payments. Does that happen? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? But 80% of the excise tax increment revenues would be placed in an escrow account to pay CD assessments or replenish the reserve fund. Does that happen? Okay. So subsequent to that, 
there are the I'm not sure of the date of that, but the 2019 bond 2013. The 2019 bond were issued, and there was a different arrangement entered into with the holders that removed the 80% escrow requirement. And then the excise tax bonds basically provided a separate assessment escrow, which provided for payment of CED assessments on Charles Point Crossing for a three-year period. So that, that was the change in that arrangement. But I'm pretty sure I never said that there that this would could not potentially be a problem again. It was well, a well, I mean, I'll read here it was to say ultimately if the TIF revenues weren't sufficient to make bond payments, developers unable to pay CED assessments and the undeveloped property could be sold for payment of those assessments. But that's never happened. We've never that's, paid the CED assessments. That's where we are now. Now, is that the the unpaid assessments are now being sold? Okay, because they've never been able to pay them. Correct. And we're just you're asking us to kick the can again. I'm not asking I, you to do anything. I'm just saying that's the that's the, the developer is asking. Okay. That's correct. And. The commission is being asked to authorize us back in 14 to make adjustments to the $28 million bonds and two that we sold in 2008. So that this would all get taken care of back in 2013. That's right. And we're here today again. That's correct. So I guess I need to ask my fellow commissioners why are we? even rushing something through that we haven't had time to discuss, sit down with the developer, the bondholders, and push the limits of legality of what an emergency meeting is when this has gone on and on. And I can bring out the articles where we have bought property so that he can pay his taxes. City of Bridgeport bought property so he can pay his taxes. When does Harrison County say uncle? And so tons ton of this where we have gone out of the way for this company. And today they ask you as our representative, and they're not even sitting in the room, which I find even more offensive. And I would be happy to tell the owners that I'm offended that they don't have the ability to walk in here and talk to us about this issue that they expect us to pass today because they're trying to say they didn't know what the issue was. And it's been advertised for five months. Those are all fair comments, certainly. Um, with respect to the Trace point and the item being up on the agenda. You know, I agree it's pushing the envelope um, to characterize this as an emergency item. I pointed out the potential avenues where it could carry the day. You know, the only arguments I can think of to make would be Genesis indicated that they have never received a Notice that they were required to receive from the auditor's office when the sale 27 date was actually scheduled. And so that's the only item as I see here today that I'm aware of that I can point to, to that addresses Trey's concern and an admitted one uh, that it's an unexpected event. Uh, so the, the fact of the sale that it would occur at some point in time, and so they can absolutely a known item. So the commissioner's point that if he has where it was advertised, and obviously that's a known item, it just comes down to the 30 day, I think there were supposed to, Genesis said there's supposed to be a 30 day notice of the 27th date that they've never received. Then why didn't they not go and appeal that with the auditor's office? So postpone the sale instead of what we're doing today. 
that they should be there, not in front of us, asking for us to ram through something that we don't even know what the point of running it through is because I don't even know how they're going to hear CED assessments every time that they've come in here. CED assessments are an issue, and we're making it again. And it just keeps growing. How much is the CED assessments growing to now? Uh, 14 million. 14 million. So I just came here today to that if the commission wanted, directed you. I understand, to consider this as an opportunity to take action with the request of Genesis, uh, fully understanding that it is an emergency and may not fit within these guidelines. And I certainly can't give you a legal opinion on that it does. Um, that's kind of where we are. And the motion's on the floor to approve the item. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Motion carried. Number six, the administrator's report. The few things I have is um, so on next week's agenda, I'm going to have budget revision for a lot of different departments. I'm also going to ask the elected officials that if they have any budget revisions that they could possibly put them on next week's agenda so we can get them taken care of now. And then we can see once again for the June 15th deadline for budget revisions being done. Also, the sewer project downstairs that has been going on for over a month, um, it feels like forever. We hit some snags in the road, and we are literally, um, literally, literally, um, we're trying to work around those and get this done as soon as possible. Unfortunately, we hit those snags, and it's taken much longer, and I do not have an end date in sight right now. Commissioner Trecos, do you have anything? Hearing none, move on to Commissioner Hinkle. Yes, ma'am. Today we watched the travesty that you all in this commission violated state code and you did it willingly and you did not represent your constituents. You can say what you want. You know that what we did today was in violation of uh, what your legal and hired attorney told you to do. So I don't know why we keep Mr. Trey Zimmerman anymore because you all don't listen to his legal opinion. You do your personal opinion. So I would recommend at the next meeting, please put on the agenda that Mr. Zimmerman is no longer needed for this because we just rubber stamp whatever Charles Point brings to us. So we don't need to use trade and we don't need to use them for anything else. You all did not look into this. You were not brought up to speed on what this involved and you voted without any discussion or input on how this affects everything that we do going forward. And I hope everybody in Harrison County realized if you got a tax issue, just come and ask for a 24 hour emergency. If you're a business, you can ask for it to be defrayed. And you guys, it's wide open. We have opened the floodgate. I hope the businesses and the people of Harrison County will realize what you and Commissioner Treecox did today as far as what this commission. Are you done? Uh, no, it'll be more. Okay. I didn't expect anything less out of you. I don't okay. expect you would. Okay. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm not treated. I have nothing. I'm not even going to respond. So, motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn this meeting. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. No. 
Looks like Mr. Trey Cost is left, so we're done. No, I'm sorry, Madam, that motion doesn't care. Oh, so we're just going to sit here the rest of the day? Well, we can. You can go right ahead because I'm not. I'm not going to sit here and be take your. I've taken your stuff for two okay. years. Well, no, about four years now, David. I don't need it anymore. Thank you very much. Well, then you know what to do, Susan, to resign. I'm not using no, no, it ain't not happening. You're not going to do that. Well, we do us all a favor. So I guess we're in till the next meeting. Yeah, I'm not mad at you. Every recess, bro. Yes. Yeah.